Jennifer Conweiler, uh, the author of the brand new book, Creating Introvert-Friendly Workplaces, and the author of many other books on introverts and their place in our world. Welcome to Red Cape Revolution. Oh, Darcy, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, engage with you. Yeah. I'm, and, your, and your community and fans, of course. So, well, I'm so excited to talk to you about the new book. There's so many relevant things to what we're going through today when we think about remote work and we think about uh, biases that we have and the introversion, extroversion spectrum I know is one you've been working on for a long time. So before we begin, tell me a little bit, you know, tell our audience a little bit about your work and really where you focus. Right. Well, I've been working uh, in the space of, of being a champion for introverts, Darcy, in the workplace, particularly for the last 12 years. And I've, I've written about how introverts lead, how they influence using their quiet strengths. I've even, I've even written about ingenious opposites about how we don't drive each other crazy, introverts and extroverts. <laughs> and this latest work really um, was, was born through my work and my, uh, the interest of many of my um, communities who spoke to me about um, not so much changing uh, who they are and developing themselves. We've always talked about introverts needing to draw from quiet strengths, but let's take a look at the organizations that we work in. Uh, let's not always be asking uh, introverts to adjust Right. And even extroverts, we need to have systems and structures. And we're, you're talking about relevancy now, you know, organizations that really support all kinds of personality styles. Um, and I don't really think we're going to have major change until we we have that. And so that was where this book was born, Creating Introvert Friendly Workplaces. I wanted to take a look at where the needs were, what, what I was hearing from people about where they were most frustrated, where the pain was in really coming to work authentically who they, as who they are. Um, but I also wanted to search out those organizations and companies and workplaces that uh, had uh, best practices. Like we could find maybe introvert inclusion pockets, like we kind of called them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the things you and I have always you know, had in common is that we really want to work with people to bring their their best selves to work, you know, bring their superpowers to work, to be who they are. Mm -hmm. And what I find really interesting about this book is then now turning it to, okay, so how do we influence our workplaces? And those of us who are leaders, how do we be more conscious about yeah. Our, both our own style as well as the style of others so that we don't work with a bias that says, hey, if I'm an extrovert, everybody needs to be like me. Or if I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. everybody needs to be like me. So right, you know, right. dig into the book a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations, by the way. This is Thank your you. fourth, fourth book, fifth book? It's uh, the fourth on this topic, the fifth, my fifth book overall. Yeah. Okay. First I, I think we first met after the yeah. introverted leader. So yeah. Oh my gosh. That was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah that was the I first know. one. That was the first one. Since then we had a second edition come out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's great. But so tell, tell our audience the true definition of extrovert and introvert. Uh, I think we make up a lot of stories about what mm -hmm. these things mean. What uh -huh. does it really mean? Yeah, and you know, the definition keeps actually flexing a little bit, which is quite interesting, Darcy. Uh, the, but it always comes down to a couple things. Introverts get their energy from within. They recharge through being in their heads. Uh, they can be out with people and out in the world, but they need to come back and decompress. And that's usually the way you determine oftentimes whether you're an introvert or extrovert. Must you have that time to recharge and take that quiet time and embrace silence in order to do that? Um, extroverts, on the other hand, get their stimulation and their batteries charged. And now we know it's a little bit more even than just uh, ephemeral. It's actually brain chemicals. They need more of that outside stimulation. You know, getting out in the world and being with people and connecting with all kinds of social stimuli. So that's what you were talking about, the, uh, the pandemic and, and being at home. That's been very difficult for a number of, of extroverts that I've come across, right? Because they don't have that, that going and busyness and being out there. Now, when I say we've learned a lot, right, over the last uh, years, the last decade, I would say, we've really moved like we have with a lot of aspects of uh, neurodiversity. And, and that's really about, you know, differences that you can't always see 
right? People that are introverts or extroverts or, you know, people that have other learning uh, uh, desires, um, other kinds of um, things on the spectrum, if you will. That term spectrum is actually used with introversion and extroversion. And what we know is that most in terms of the numbers, you know, between 40 and 60% of people are, are introverts, but it, most of us kind of are in the, if you think of it as like a bell curve, we're sort of in the middle. Mm. So we prefer slightly, you know, to be more introverted, extroverted, but we're not, you know, there are outliers at the end. If you think about the bell curve, the either end, we have flaming extroverts. And then we have a, a friend of mine who's an introvert who calls herself a hermit. You know, most of us are not either hermits or flaming extroverts, but we're somewhere in the middle. And what we know too about those two definitions is that as we grow and develop and have experiences, we um, become, we round those parts of our, ourselves out because we all have introverts and extrovert qualities within us. There was also a term you may have heard, ambivert. You heard that term? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And some people identify with that. They go, well, I go back and forth. Um, not Probably not as many people identify that with that as they do <clears throat> saying I'm an introvert or an extrovert. Yeah, I think of it sometimes as <clears throat> where, I might, where I might major. Because, you know, I know that most people would label me an extrovert and I play well in that <clears throat> mode. But I definitely, like you're saying, I need my recharge time. I need my quiet time. And, mm-hmm. I, and it's been surprising to me personally during this whole um, crazy time in the world we're recording this in late june 2020 um that um i there's a lot of things i haven't missed that i would have gone to or groups i would have been with but i get to engage like this i get to engage in some Mm -hmm. other small groups and maybe that's been enough so i you know i think there's probably lots of different people thinking about like how much how much out or or in do i need and i and so tell me one of the chapters in your book, I mean, you didn't write it knowing that we would have a global pandemic, that no. half of the world would be uh, moving to remote work, especially even companies and organizations that never thought they would have a majority of their people in remote work. But you have a whole chapter about remote working and, mm-hmm. and using it as a workplace yes. you know, a tool and how it works for introverts. So tell me a little bit about the learnings of uh, right. uh, remote work and how we think differently differently with introverts and extroverts. Well, thank you for that question, Darcy. Even before Corona, when one of the areas that I looked at was remote work because I kept hearing from um, introverts that and their leaders that that was ex- extremely positive. They were seeing it very positively. In fact, we did a survey that um, that actually that got um, over 240 responses, mostly from introverts, where we looked at a number of dimensions. <coughs> excuse me, of the workplace. And remote work came out, it, it, interesting, we asked the question, how open is your company to um, embracing remote work? How much is it you being used? And the, the answer came back, 60% of those people that answered said their company was open and actually using remote work as an option, um, which to me was encouraging you know, and, and that the fact that what we know from, from the research is that even if you give people one day a week, you know, I'm talking about pre-corona, it, it does increase motivation and increases um, uh, retention. So remote work has always had very positive high marks in terms of work-life balance, all of these things. So here we are at corona and everybody is, many people are told, okay, you're going like from a, a, a sprint to a marathon. You're going to do this five days a week. You know, for people like you, for me, it probably wasn't as big an adjustment as it was for others. But introverts in general really do relish having that time um, to be to be out of the workplace and and not all the time though, because you know there were other things that we looked at in remote work and in that chapter about the downside. I can talk about that for a moment about the downside of remote work because too much of a good thing can be a can be a weakness, right? Right. So. What, what people do miss, and I'm hearing this now at this point in the stage of what, three months in, is that they are missing those uh, pockets, those moments of socialization that are important to build relationships. So some companies are actually overcoming that by structuring more 
you know, one-on-ones and sort of fun, happy hours and things like that. But that doesn't really do it, especially for introverts who don't really like happy hours. Right. 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 But, and, I, and I had, you know, I had a client say to me a couple of weeks ago, she, she was feeling like, yeah, you know, like she was missing something, you know, and, and, and really diagnosed it, that it was the, the casual vibe that she just would get passing by people's desks and hearing snippets of conversations and seeing who was in what meetings and conference rooms. And, and it just was all this informal communication that goes on when you're physically together that, um, Yes. Uh, that, that uh, you know, as an introvert, she didn't recognize she was missing it, but she just kind of felt like there's a, right. there's a layer of knowledge that I'm not getting. Very well put, Tarsi. Yeah. And, and another thing that we looked at when we looked at open space off- offices, which was probably where the most pain came in the survey uh, and in my interviews with people who were uh, more introverted and their leaders, uh, that people found that the, the open space as it was before to be extremely frustrating on a lot of levels. But the part that they did like and that I didn't expect to find was sort of similar to what you're saying, the socialization. But it was also, it helped the work. Mm-hmm. It was about the collaboration part. So one example of a company that went total open space uh, from a from a private office situation said to me, a couple of people there said, we didn't expect, and they were introverts, we didn't expect that one of the advantages is that we're hearing conversations, we're getting more context to our own work. We're able to contribute in a richer way to the team goals because we're sort of all together in this pen. You know, Now, again, downsides to that, but also what's happening now? Are we using our tools virtually Some companies are, they're using Slack, they're using Microsoft Teams to try to uh, at least replicate that. Uh, But I think we are losing some things. But in general, the bottom line is introverts love remote work. Uh, They are more productive and uh, we just need to manage how we implement it and execute it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm an introvert right now, what are the things that you would suggest that I need to do to manage my career because we're also in a place where, um, you know, jobs are being downsized, lost, just trimmed for just because they, they can right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and often the, you know, there's a phrase that I often say, and you know, and I'm continuing to challenge myself on, on my own biases and how things sound, but the visibility equals viability. And mm-hmm. in a remote world, and if your tendency is that, you know, you need that pro- more of that private time, how does yeah. an introvert stay visible, valuable, but also, um, you know, make sure that they don't get lost in mm-hmm. a lot of things going on in an organization? Right, right. Well, you know, I don't think the real actual productive networking app actually happened to cocktail receptions before, <laughs> you know, I, so I think look at it that way. Um, we've been we've been introduced to the virtual wor- world. So there are a couple of things that introverts that I have found in my research have done very effectively and been highly visible and highly connected. So consider this. Uh, start with looking at your strengths. One of them is to prepare and to take quiet time and to reflect. So use the time to do the kind of exercises, Darcy, that you provide where you do really thorough self-assessment. And that does a couple of things. You kind of take a look at uh, what you've done well. And so you can really present yourself in in the way that is not bragging on yourself, but is a real reflection of your skills and, and all your experiences in a very coherent way. And I know you have methods i'm i think i know i've seen them right to do that and structure that in a framework so you take that quiet time and do that and then to share that um i would consider two strengths that you have as an introvert to do that well one is to build on those relationships those one-on-one conversations and that conversation can be starting out on email you know that's fine or through your company intranet um, or, you know, if you're going to be leaving the organization, looking out at your network on LinkedIn and really making sure LinkedIn now, which is st- seems to be right, a very still very potent part of the process to do that. So I would do that as a, like the second area. Um, and then uh, take a look at, uh, at scheduling some time, some one on one, some learning a lot online. You can spend a lot of time without talking. Right. 
and, and be starting to become visible that way. So yeah, I, I'd love you to chime in too as to what you have found and that's helpful in terms of a structured way of looking at your career when, when you're not necessarily the one who's always out there talking. Well, and I, you know, and I appreciate you, uh, what you were saying about that the best networking is not what we think of as networking. You know, yeah. that the, that one-on-one -on -one reach out is, is exactly the introvert strength. Those, yeah. those smaller conversations about, you know, I've always, when I'm talk, we're talking about networking, talking about, you make it about the other person. It's like, I want to know about you and your work. Mm -hmm. And that totally feeds to things that are, are, you know, the introverts are even, I mean, better suited at it. It's more natural temperament. Mm -hmm. Um, I had an interesting experience recently where I was speaking and helping facilitate some sections of a conference that used to be in person, used to be a, you know, 1500 yeah. people conference in person, and now it was all online. And I was actually pleasantly surprised at seeing how people were jumping into the chat in a way that if we are, you're in a conference room, uh, you know, we, we've all been there, right, with the chairs lined up and they're linked together and you can barely fit into the chairs and, and one speaker. Don't remind on me. Stage. <laughs> I hope we don't ever have to do that again for a while. So, yeah, but, you know, or even a workshop room, you know, yes. that's, that's, yeah. that's a couple hundred people. Um, that it's that the more people were engaging and connecting with each other in the chat than I think would have done it live because it's a safe place. It's a again speaks to the introvert strengths yeah. of, you know. I mean, I, I'm going to, I'm going to chime in. I'm going to have that discussion. I'm going to pull out somebody to talk to later. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a lot of assets right now that I worry sometimes that, that folks who will label themselves introverts, uh, don't believe that there's an access point for them. You know, don't believe oh, that, that, that the world wants to hear from them or listen to them. And, um, so right. And in quiet influence, I'm sorry, quiet influence, we, we outlined six key strengths and how introverts use them to, to make a difference and to create change. And to your point about helping, I think that's really important or looking into not just at yourself, right? It, networking is about giving and getting. But if we're out there saying, I need a job and, you know, we're kind of, and that's introverts and extroverts. Um, but think about who is it that you can check in with? to see how they're doing and how you can support them. Um, so it, it, I really do think particularly, and I've been laid off several times myself in my career, and I remember that, that feeling of kind of like, a de you know, it's almost desperation. And you don't want to come off that way. Even if you're feeling scared and fearful, you still want to reach out and say, how are you doing? And, and show that you've done a little research about what they're up to and, and offering to support them. And your first kind of connection with somebody online shouldn't be, well, I'm looking for a job. Um, you know, and I think that's, again, that's for introverts or extroverts, but don't you think that's a part of it is like looking at how you can be of service? Oh, absolutely. I always say serve, you know, serve, not sell. I mean, the selling will come through will come. When, when someone trusts you to serve. Right. So, the trust. Thank you. Yeah. That's really important. And introverts are really good at building those deeper relationships. And I think that's an asset that you shouldn't forget if you're introverted, yeah. that it's not just superficial talk. What you refer to to the chat has been a lovely phenomenon that I have noticed for the last 10 years of teaching online courses. And people would say, well, how do you get introverts to participate? It's like, Take a look at the chat, right. you know, take a look at the chat. And as you build trust in your conversation, we're kind of going into online training here, but I have always found it to be so cool to then have, it, have folks who are chatting to feel comfortable enough with you as a facilitator, or if let's say you're running a meeting to then say, you know, John, would you mind just coming into the room now and telling us a little bit more about that? Mm -hmm. So you're again, just like you would do in a real meeting in a, in a live meeting, not virtually, you would make it comfortable for somebody who's not going to jump in to do that. And we can all do that for each other. We can be allies for each other. And in the job search or if it's in a meeting, we need to support and be aware when people are not participating and not engaging. So tell me more about the being allies, because you know, we're, we've been hearing that a lot in some of our uh, in some of the social justice conversations that are yes. going on now, some of the conversations um, around our unconscious bias, uh, you know, whether that be 
uh, you know, people of color, whether that be sexual orientation, but also introversion and extroversion is another one of the, you mentioned the spectrum. And so yeah. how, can it, how can a leader who is maybe a leader who's also an extrovert, what do they need to do to be a better ally for their introverted teams? Well, that was when I talked about the research and looking for pockets of inclusion, um, I was really struck by the amount of leaders I came across. I did some work in Silicon Valley, visited companies there, and it wasn't just there. I found leaders who were willing, A, to do the work on themselves, to get to know, we're talking a lot about this, our own biases and what makes us tick, and also our own style, our natural proclivity. You know. As an extrovert, maybe you interrupt a lot because that's how you talk to other extroverts and that's always worked for you. But do you realize that, you know, three out of four of your team members are feeling shut down when you do that? You know, you may not intend to do that, but you are, you're causing that kind of a, a climate. So by starting with yourself and understanding your own strengths, your own preferences, the way you are in the world, that's where you have to, I believe you have to begin. And then number two, get educated on what it means to be an introvert and an extrovert, just like in other dimensions of diversity. Um, and understand that so that the third thing you can do is when you're out in the world, and we, we talk about this in terms of being a change agent, uh, when you're out in the world, you're intentionally looking for opportunities to support and um, showcase People who are quiet or who not, are not getting a chance to express their opinion because maybe they're not comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think those three ways you can be an ally. And uh, I heard many examples in all levels of diversity and particularly with introverts. And it's, uh, you want to be careful. You're not condescending at all, but you're supporting. You're supporting and, and you're, you're saying, you know, Darcy, let's say you're an introvert. Um, I noticed Darcy hasn't um, had a chance to get her opinion in here. I see she's chatting over there. Darcy, would you be willing to share that? You know, just like we said before. Or I had a woman yesterday staffing a, um, a conference. And now I've been involved in gender diversity for a while. And there's many analogous themes here. <clears throat> and I was on a panel two years ago. And so we, I was on with another a woman was on another panel the next uh, next session. And we looked, I said, are you on a man all too? On a man. <laughs> and uh -huh. because people were, and people would laugh at that, kind of like, oh, isn't that cute? But the reality is, if you don't have diversity in your conferences and your programs and your meetings and your sessions, whether they be internal or external, think about what you're missing out on in terms of um, the, the diversity of opinions and creativity and innovation and really in companies, you're, you're affecting your bottom line because there's total research now. It's, it's overwhelming mm -hmm. that companies that draw from a diverse standpoint of, of individuals are so much more higher in performance. Right. And, and for companies, especially thinking about the introvert friendly workplace, you know, yes. which is the new book, I know. Uh, and again, we're not even just oh, talking about a little physical. longer, Darcy. You went like this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Right. We're not just talking no, no, about. Well, that's all right. I have posters. I have, you know, we'll have links. To, stuff. We'll have links directly to it in the blog post. I'm not shy about promoting. That's stuff. right. Exactly. Hey, you, hey, you believe in your work, and you and we need to. I want to get the word out there. That's it. That yeah. Is. Well, because you know, as we we think, we don't we don't know what the physical workplace is going to look like but all of this is really the cultural workplace and you know I, and you have some tools to be able for people to assess what's happening in their workplace from their yeah. experience right tell me yeah. a little bit about your quiz and some of those other tools yes we created a, a quiz that was really based on the seven dimensions that we encourage organizations to look at uh, including hiring including teams uh, and things like that. And, uh, and we de developed this quiz. It's very short. You can take it. It's on my website. We'll, we'll put the link in the notes. And what you'll learn from that quiz is how you stack up compared to companies that are doing a really good job of being introvert inclusive. So you can see, A, where it's going well for you, because they're probably going well in some areas, uh, but where you have some work to do and where you can focus your efforts. Um, so whether it be learning, whether it be how you hire, 
whether it be uh, how you communicate and set up those kind of parameters around remote work and those kinds of things to incl be inclusive of introverts. You'll get techniques in the book to do that, but it's great to start with a baseline. So that's the quiz that we're talking about, the introvert friendly quiz. And by the way, we have three other quizzes on there too about being of leadership and influence and genius opposites. They all correlate with the work that was done in the other books. So, and they're all free of charge. So great, great. And we'll link to all of them as well as you and I, I think you've talked about the last couple of books in forum like this. So we'll link to that. So as people are upping their introvert IQ that they can go back to some of the previous work too. And, and, uh, and check in on that. And, you know, and as, as leaders, we're always doing our, our own self-awareness and our own and recognizing what our biases are and as you're talking about it you know I definitely know there's been times when you know I've talked over somebody instead of letting their idea flow or that I've labeled somebody as though she's shy or she's quiet as opposed to figuring out where I'm not giving her the space and you know that's been part of my journey to try to get better and places where I continue to get better and and knowing you and learning about some of your work has been part of that to raise that awareness so hopefully this conversation helps somebody else whether they're an extrovert who wants to be more inclusive of their introvert friends and or whether it's a, an introvert who wants to make sure that they're creating the space that they need, but not getting left behind. And there's, you know, I think there's a lot of really good stuff in here for all of us, no matter where we are on the spectrum. So. Well, thank you, Darcy. And do I see a red cape back there? There is a red cape back okay, there. Okay, well, I, I love the work that you do in terms of the red cape revolution and how you support people at no matter what stage or issue they're dealing with in their career. And this is relates really well to that, you know, and having more knowledge, as you say, and, and being honest about our own biases and then working and taking actions to overcome them. We're never going to totally overcome them, but to be aware and conscious and acting. That's the key. And so I'm so encouraged by the change that we have seen from people like you by promoting this. And as we go forward and, you know, my, I wrote in the uh, dedication to my two granddaughters, Ava and Millie, I said, you know, to and may you inherit a world that embraces everyone. So I couldn't say it any better than that. The world needs all of us and now more than ever. So Jennifer yeah. Conwire, it has been a pleasure to have a chance to catch up with you, yeah. hear about the new book called Creating Introvert Friendly Workplaces. We'll have links uh, wherever you see this video. And thank you so much for being here on Red Cape Revolution today. Thank you, Darcy, so much for having me.